Hello, welcome back to Sales and Shooting Centre. In this, our latest programme on practical shooting, specifically practical mini rifle. Now, it's been a while since we've done a little video, mainly because we've been concentrating on competition. Over the winter time, we've been doing our winter league, and over last summer, COVID and coronavirus allowing, we've actually been filming and shooting our Hawk British Mini Rifle Championship here. It's a six round championship uh, that's going out on Sky TV. So we've been concentrating on filming and shooting that in both ways. But we thought we'd do a little video, we think, uh, that has been come to light of watching people compete, sometimes for the first time in the Mini Rifle Championship, and that's stage planning. Now the last, oh, I don't know, year, I've trained and we've trained just over 130 people to shoot practical mini rifle. Uh, and a lot of those are competing now, and a great many of them are now competing in the Hawk Championship. And certainly by watching and being range master for that championship, I got the chance to watch some of the more experienced shooters and some of the less experienced shooters uh, plan and organize and attack a course of fire. And it's come to my attention that it may be something that maybe some of the old hands could do a bit brushing up, but more importantly, some of the new guys could really learn something from how to plan a stage. So what I've done doing this, this program is I'm taking two of the actual stages that we shot on round three of the Hawk Championship and go through the process of what we need to do to plan a course of fire. Now in this stage behind me now, which one of the ones we shot, we've got targets both at very short distance, one, two meters away, and 40 meters away, as well as a range of steel plate popper targets anywhere from 15 to 25 meters, with obviously barricades around. Now this is one of a classic course of fire that you tend to see, especially in some indoor ranges, where you restrict the movement of the shooter to a shooting box, and then you have to manoeuvre around that short small area to engage all the different targets at different times. Now it's one of the things that has come to light in watching people, is that trying to explain to people that the two slowest aspects of practical shooting generally is your movement to the target and then the actual setting up to aim on the target. The actual time pulling a trigger is actually quite short, but that moving around to the target and also getting set up on the target are the two most time consuming aspects of planning a stage. So in this example, what you're looking to do with a small course of fire where there's multiple targets but quite restrictive movement is minimize the number of times you are stationary shooting a target. Now, this is one thing I'll go through as much that with mini rifle you're shooting bullets <clears throat> but a lot of guys who are practical shotgunners try and do a, a running target running past a target uh, which with a shotgun with a spread half a meter wide it's not hard, that, that hard to miss a couple of meters but when you're shooting a bullet that half a meter spread is the difference between a miss and actually a target or a target so you tend to find that staying stationary or certainly very very slow movement on a target makes most sense rather than this run and gun type style it's quite funny watching people watch past spray a target and get 15 mics because they thought they've hit them. But for this particular stage, what we're looking at is some targets that are three or four different positions to shoot at. And what I noticed in the course of fire was people were uh, moving themselves too often. In this particular course of fire, there's actually only three different shooting positions to really minimize the number of shooting positions you've got. You've got to shoot the two short targets, which there's no way of getting to them and shooting other targets at that point. You've got a position and an aperture where you can then engage five steels and three of the papers at 40 meters. And then a third position, which is shooting underneath the barricade for the final five steels. That's the minimum. You couldn't really do it in less than three shooting positions. But what we noticed in the course of fire is that people would literally almost get a crate, a fourth or even a fifth shooting position. And the reason why is that <clears throat> as they start the course of fire, they get what's called a uh, you know, target memory. All of a sudden you see a target, shoot it. Okay. The thing about planning practical shooting is that you need to have a plan. Now, as a famous boxer once said, everyone's got a plan till the first punch. And the same happens to practical shooting. And the same happened to myself. When I shot this course of fire in the competition, I had my plan of going to one, two, three positions. But I, two things I forgot, the moment the buzzer went, I forgot to lean on the aperture to give me a bit more stability for the 40 meter targets. And also I didn't quite remember where this aperture was. I had to shuffle myself over to it again, rather than going straight to it. That's just part of competing, you know, I, I should have known better, should have got, got, got myself planned better in terms of shooting position. But by minimizing that target position and the movements, you'll minimize your time. So in this example, from this perspective, I'm going to over there. There are two small targets behind those barriers there. So my plan would then be to engage those quite closely. Then here, there's an aperture, just here, which you can shoot through the targets. There's five plates in front 
and then two at the back. And then finally over here, we've got underneath the aperture here, where we've got five more plate targets to shoot from. If you minimize that positioning, so one, two, and three, you're gonna maximize your target ch chances and also minimize your time on target itself, okay? A few people were shooting through the aperture and then going through this aperture at the side underneath. I just hear it. The problem you have here is that you shoot these targets here and then some people were leaning across to shoot three plate targets, not realizing they couldn't get the last two because they had to move again. So that creates the fourth shooting position. Now, if you get any, any, any average time, the moment you change shooting positions will add on at least half a second to a second and a half, even just a very short movement in terms of time. So think about a course of fire taking 25, 30 seconds, a couple of second changes, 10%. It's, it's worth thinking about in terms of moving. The second aspect of it is that it takes around about half a second to take to actually make a choose a movement or 10 seconds or so to actually change. So once you change positions, you've got to change again. It's another time taken up. Another thing that I did notice on this particular course of fire was multiple shots. Okay. Generally speaking, it takes about a tenth of a second to fire one round. Okay. That's engaging trigger, pulling the trigger and the bullet going through. Even with some of these short targets here that are only two meters away, we saw some people shoot three, four, even six times into a target. Now it's a micro, so you want to make sure you score it but six times doesn't really take an extra second or so just to get an extra few rounds on the target. Just wasting time. Two taps, okay? A third if you're not sure, but any more than three is both excessive and wasting time. Although I do admit it's quite good fun, so I do understand that side of it. So that's this kind of stage. I'm now gonna move on to a different stage because this particular stage was a maximum, it didn't need a mag magazine change unless you really, really were missing a lot. You had uh, 10, uh, 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 plate targets, that's 10 rounds, and you had five paper targets, that's not 10 rounds, that's 20 rounds. Every magazine is 25 rounds or the next is 30 rounds. So you shouldn't need to reload. So this is more a planning of how many times do I position and shoot and how many times I shoot then. I'm now gonna go through to another stage now, a much longer stage, more run and gun stage, where it did require reload and therefore requires a slightly different plan in terms of shooting. All right? Right then, on this particular stage is more of a run and gun. There are 19 paper targets, so 38 rounds required, which means you must change magazines somewhere during the course of fire. Now that's the additional thing you must consider, but it doesn't change the concept of practical shooting. You minimize the number of times that you are actually stationary shooting targets. Again, as I said, running along the stage, shooting from the hip, great for shotgun, terrible for mini rifle. And you know, the bullet's only that big, not half a meter. So as of that, the shotgun has always struggled with this kind of process because they try and do it on the move. It just doesn't work, it really doesn't, it's Hollywood. So what you're trying to do is get a station position and shoot as many targets you can from each station position. Now, when I designed the course of fire, there was a minimum of four places you had to move. Okay, you couldn't do less than four. Um, and the reason why was to try and make sure we make people think. But in watching the course of fire, I saw people have six, seven, eight, nine, even 11 changes of position. And remember, every time you change position, you're wasting time. So what you're looking to do is when you're looking at a course of fire and you're planning the course of fire, is working down your plan in terms of where you're gonna engage targets. Now in this example, it was a ready, standard ready position, so you're ready to go. Going down range, targets either side, and what you need to do is stop, gauge as many targets as you could, onto the next position, gauge the next lot, less than the last lot, and then the last two were tucked right at the very back corner, which a lot of people forgot, which you had to go right up to as well. Now, in those circumstances, there's two ways of looking at it. Some people count targets, and some people count rounds. Now on the basis that every target needs two rounds, counting rounds does make some sense. The downside is if you pull a shot, you need to top up, all of a sudden your count's out the window. So I tend to count targets and make the assumption that I've got a bit of leeway in between. Now, saying that you always change uh, magazines when you're, when you're moving rather than stationary because you're wasting time is a classic thing. Good example, I shot this course of fire, I completely forgot. I got my shooting positions right, I managed to gauge all the targets I needed to, it's reasonably quick, but I forgot to change magazine. So I get to the end of fine, click, run out. So, I had to change the magazine stationary, cost me three or four seconds of time, put me down the leaderboard. So that's what you've got to remember. You have to think about the number of targets shooting, number of rounds you're shooting at them, and your positioning of them. So in this course of fire, for example, it was a move further forward, then you can engage targets both sides, four and one, two on the other. Then move it further forward, you can engage on the three on one side, two on the other. Then you further forward towards the end, you've got on the five targets on the right, two on the right, and then the very far end was the last two targets you had to tuck over and shoot. So it's four shooting positions, but in the course of fire, we watched six, seven, even 11. So it's, and that every time you change position, you're wasting time. 
So that's what you think about is you're looking at the number of targets, number of rounds to take, and also how many you can shoot from certain positions, minimizing the number of positions, taking account of mag change, which is always done on a maneuver between shooting positions, not stationary. All right, so those two is a good example in terms of planning stages. There's not just thing as a perfect plan. There's not just thing as the ultimate plan for perfect shooters. Everyone shoots differently. What works for one person may not work for another. But then, and again, the crucial thing is that once the buzzer goes, you'll find again, all the plan is at the window. In both these courses so far, I got them wrong. Okay, on the first one, I actually forgot what the aperture was. So I had to make an extra movement. And this one here, I've got to change max. So classic two very easy mistakes to make. All right, so hope that's useful, but planning stage is quite useful in terms of overall. You never can learn it, all it is is experience. But I thought going into this kind of answer might be helpful those people who are new to shooting, but also to remind those people who are much new to shotgun more, it's a bit more accurate than that required, so it's longer distance. All right, hope that's useful. Any comments, please, again, just say to say hello and, uh, in, in, and all subscribe in terms of our channel. We've got more things coming through. Um, talk to you soon. Cheers.